Welcome back to Cisco Knowledge Base. This is Zach from Content Security Team. Today we'll discuss a new functionality that added with the version Async OS version 8.5x and higher. It's called VRRP, Virtual Router Redundancy Protocol. The documentations are located here during the beta testing. Once the release is available for larger customer base or as a GA, all the release notes and user guide will be posted here on the Cisco.com where all these documents are homed. So release notes and user guide will be posted for everyone to review and use it. So what exactly the VRRP protocol allow us to do? It's also known as a high availability management network protocol that increased availability for default gateway when servicing the host. When so multiple web security appliance in this case will be pointing to same virtual IP. In case of a failure, another host can take over and continue serving clients. It uses the IP multicast address 224.0018 as a link local scope to send advertisements. Some of the states are initialization, master, and backups. So host with the highest priority wins. But if we have a multiple host, in this case the web security appliance, with the same priority, the faster becomes a master whoever responds the fastest. Preemptive option is if the higher prior priority machine comes back online it can take over and be a master again. We can have up to 255 hosts in a failover group. All web security appliances in a fail group need to be in the same broadcast network. So pretty straightforward. These are some of the specification for VRRP that listed here. Not all of them but if we're interested to look at all the detail, RFC 5798 provides great detail. So the config steps are pretty straightforward. We'll go from the GUI is the network, high availability. We add a fail, failover group, and we can complete all the required information there. We'll go over one and take a look at all the details. From the command line, there's an option for failover config command, new, you're going to start configuring there for the entire uh, configuration part there as well. System log that provides all the detail in this case for looking at all the information in real time. For troubleshooting, the command we can do failover config, it will tell you it's the master. In this case, in order to read it, the group ID is 91. My virtual IP address is Last octet, 142, 142 for different machines. These are from one machine, and this one is from different machine, which is group ID is 91. So this one is a master, this one is a backup. If we look at the priorities, 255 is a higher, so that's why it chose to be a master. Furthermore, we can use failover config command from the CLI and choose the option for test failover group specify the group number in this case is 91 and that gives you all the detail as to the communication between these two hosts so possible troubleshooting scenario multiple master in the failover group so or no failover taking place between the web security appliance for the first one if we have a misconfigured virtual switch in the virtual environment where the virtual WSAs are part of the group. vSwitch where both machines are residing on the same vSwitch. That's important. If I have a machine A, it's on a different vSwitch than machine B, then I will have mix and match results. So this is critical. And also, due to misconfiguration, 
parameters can be a different two. What does that mean by the obvious one is the group? So if machine one is sitting on group number 91, if machine two is sitting on group number 92, that will not match and they will be independent to each other. So group is important. What are the caveats? Failover interface. So failover interface are always bound to a physical interface. So it must be, and then when we do the configuration, we'll take a look at it. A failover interface need to have an IP address of the same subnet as a physical interface. These are just the requirements and must be followed. And again, the third bullet, failover interface across WSA's web security appliance belonging to the same failover group. For the services, failover is only available for data, which is proxy services. Proxy will automatically bind a failover interface when created. If a separate routing table in effect, then data routing will be used. So recommendations is to use for explicit mode only. Compatibilities. All web security appliance failover group need to run 8.5x release or later. And this is the obvious one since this feature was introduced or is introduced in 8.5. These are the system log example. And when we tail this log, it will show failover group. If we went down or back up, and these are the state as we talked about earlier, it goes from down to initialize to backup, from backup to master, master to up. So with that, let's look at the configuration. So VRRP configuration, in this case, I have two machines that are participating, and we can have up to 255 hosts. So to keep things simple, machine one, we go under network, high availability. It brings you to the same page that I was on. And I have a group configured, I called it Fail group, uh, failover group 91. That's my host name. That's the virtual IP address. That's the configured priority. And the status is a master. The second one, same group, it's participating. Virtual IP address is 142, it's the same as the previous one, the last octet. His priority is set to 150 hard coded. And since the priority 200 is more than 150, so he's a master comparing to second virtual appliance is 150, so he's a backup. So what's exactly under failover config? We'll take a look. So failover group, this is a range up to 255, and you can description uh, just for administration purpose. Host name, this is the process is critical. Virtual IP address and the mask is gotta be match on the same group. So if a group 91, another machine, virtual IP address match, need to match in order to participate. I can configure the interface. In this case, I have only one interface. Management is configured, so that's what it shows. I can hard code it as a master and the priority will automatically set to 255, or I can do a backup and set the hard priority. In addition, I can have a password protection. So there can be a pa password looked at between two machines or in the group. These are the advertisement interval. By default, are three seconds. There can be changes needed for slower network. So we'll uncheck that. So if you look at the first machine, group 91, description is the same, virtual IP address is the same, interface, 
and I hard coded the priority. I could have done a master, make 255. Hard coded made him choose to be a uh, master and left the default here. The other option we talked about in our, um, in our guide is for preempt. So failover handling. How do we want to handle once the failover occurs? Meaning machine one, that's, which is a master, if it goes down, do we want this machine to take over back in operation as a master once it comes back? Yes or no? If yes, then we need to go under HA global setting and set this to preemptive. By default, out of the box, is set to non-preemptive. That will make it, once the machine comes back up, it will take over as the master role again. And setting, these settings need to be matched on both machines. So this is the second one where we have a priority set to 150. And look at the preemptive setting here. Is also set to preemptive. So this configur configuration parameter must match. So cancel out of here. So the config is pretty straightforward. There's not much to it. Um, network, high availability, configure the group, host name, virtual IP address, priority, and you can force it one from backup or master and preemptive, yes or no. We'll look at our documentation here. Once we do this, then this part is configure configuration part is completed. Conversely, we can use failover config command from the CLI. We'll take a look at it. And this will walk us through if we need to configure a new group, 92. Failover group, yes and no. So it will walk through the exact same parameters that we saw in the GUI. That's the CLI command. I have it here as a failover config, new, group ID, enable, yes, and then hostname and everything else is pretty much the same from the CLI. So it depends how you prefer to configure it. Then troubleshooting is the failover config. So let's take a look at from our end. So this is a machine one. I'll bring the machine two as well. Make it things quick. So if you see one on the left, the config wise group ID is 91 91 that's my host name virtual IP address 172.18.254.142 slash 24 priority is 200 is hard coded on this one intervals is 3 seconds conversely here is 150 3 seconds that makes him master and this is a backup to test it there's a command built in here is test failover config. Once you do that, it'll ask for if I have a multiple group configured, then it'd be useful to list which one I want to test. Let's say 91. Let's do the same thing in here. 91. So here it shows, as we said before. He uses a multicast address 224.0.0.18 in order to communicate. By default, is every three seconds. He talks about the priority of the master. And if we do fail one of them, you will see these logs will change and switch over. Very basic. Um, there's not much not complex at all. <laughs> all right, so let's minimize these. Go over back to our notes. We looked at these master, backup, failover config, 91. We saw these logs. 
again to make sure these are all sitting in the same virtual switch if in the uh, essence of we are testing this on virtual appliances and these must be taken into account when we configuring the group must be the same bound to the physical interface so on and so forth these are the log from the system log and in our example System log is enabled by default. If you tail the system log, this will show the information on what we see on the dock. Pretty straightforward. There's nothing to it. So the system log will show any activity. If it's happening or state is changing, we can also change that uh, to a trace level to get more information if you want to. So that brings us to review. On the top of the page. We discussed the new functionality being added with the async OS version 8.5x and higher virtual router redundancy protocol and that allows administrator to create a little bit more redundancy in their environment to fail over in case of you have a mul multiple web security appliances. We went through some of the specifications, and there are more in RFCs if you need to look at details. These are the VRRP specifications, some of them. It uses a multicast address 224.0018. Configuration steps are pretty straightforward from network, high availability, or if you use the command line, use the failover config and new. This is some of the troubleshooting command failover config. We can do also a test failover. You can also configure preemptive here, delete, edit from the menu. So the vSwitch must be the same in case of virtual appliance there our machines are hanging off of. Some of the logs, as we saw, this is from the system log and the other logs is from directly from the looking at the test failover group. With that concludes this topic. Thank you so much for joining. Have a great day, have a great afternoon and evening. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I see you in another video knowledge spice. Bye-bye.